Thanks to Noom for sponsoring this video. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you made a new friend? Now, I don't mean someone who you occasionally see and have some pleasant conversations with, maybe a few laughs. I'm talking about a deep, meaningful friendship. The kind of friend whom you can spend hours talking about life and the world at large, sharing your fears, anxieties, and other intimate thoughts that you rarely share with others. The kind of friend who would go out of their way to pick you up at 2am after your car broke down and you're on the side of the highway, or even lends you an ear when you're down and there's no one else to turn to. The kind of friend that you know will be there until the very end, and contemplating a life without them is seemingly impossible. A friend that you love, and they love you back even if you never say the words, you just know. For me, it's been a good while since I made a friend like that, and fortunately I do have a few people in my life who fit that criteria. The fact that it's been years since I've been able to form a friendship that's valuable like that though has made me wonder. If I've been able to do it before, then why does it feel impossible to do it again? What is it that seems to be in the way? Is it me? Is it others? Or do the circumstances of life work in opposition to the conditions required to make new friends? We have so many ways of meeting new people, and unlike in the past, the internet has facilitated a way to connect with people from across the world at any time. You can meet others through shared interests, whether it's through social media, message boards like Reddit, Discord, or even playing video games. Yet, despite all this, it's still so easy to feel alone and isolated. Online friendships can be a wonderful and very valid thing, but it can feel incomplete. There are nearly 8 billion people in the world. It seems statistically impossible that regardless of who you are, it's so difficult to connect with another human being, even if you only take into account the ones that speak your language. When you're surrounded by so many people yet feel alone and unable to connect with them, I guess you have to ask yourself, why can't you make new friends? It's a new year and we all know what that means, telling yourself that you're going to make some real changes in your life, but then come February, you already give up. This is especially true when it comes to being healthy and working out. You do a bunch of research on the diets that would suit you, ask around for workout routines, get a gym membership at a discount, and before you know it, you're back to your old ways, eating cheese puffs at midnight and watching dirty clothes gradually overwhelm that nice exercise equipment that you just got for New Year. I've been there, you've been there, we've all been there. Don't be too hard on yourself. While there are countless diets and exercise routines out there, they're not for everyone, and they might not fit around your lifestyle. What makes Noom different is that they understand that changes in behavior matter the most, and using a combination of human coaches, psychology, and science, they're able to cater to your needs as an individual and offer a personalized experience. I've been using Noom for a little while now, and they have so many features that can help you on your journey. From lessons, articles, some great recipes, and even their psych tricks, which are just little tips on how small changes can be made to improve wellness. Thanks to them, I've been able to change up my eating habits, and as a result, I've lost some weight, and my sleep has improved significantly. Noom helps you keep on track with your good habits, like tracking your calories, steps, water intake, and your weight. One of the best things about Noom, though, is that they assure you that you're not on your own. You can message actual specialists and coaches who can offer help. There's also group chats with other Noomers like you, so you can encourage each other on the way. So if you're looking to make some actual long-term changes, sign up for your trial at noom.com solari. You can take their free in-depth quiz and find out what it takes to improve your health. You honestly might be surprised at how quickly you can achieve your goals. So that's noon.com slash Solari. Mm -hmm. 
Think back to when you were a carefree child. Your whole life was ahead of you and you got to spend all day with your friends, whether that was in school or hanging out outside of it. You didn't have to worry about bills, rent, housekeeping, staying healthy, the existential threat of humanity being doomed due to a climate crisis, or work. Your obligations were few and life was good. It was also extremely easy to make friends compared to how it is now as an adult. You could just go up to some other kid and say, Hi, I'm Cranston. Would you like a Haribo? You got any gummy bears in there? Yeah. All right then. I'm Roy. We're friends now. Okay. Simple as that. Okay, maybe it wasn't so simple, at least not for everyone. I'm sure many of you watching this had difficulty making friends when you were a child, whether that's due to being shy or anxious, but there was undoubtedly less complexity to finding another person and there was far less risk, something that we'll discuss later on. Children don't really require much from a friend compared to adults. They want to have someone that they can have fun with first and foremost, to know that when it's recess or lunchtime, there's going to be someone who wants to spend time with them, so they can make jokes, laugh and talk about their day so far. As an adult, it's sweet and oddly pure to think of a friendship that requires so little, especially when you consider how, as an adult, having a shared struggle or anguish can often be the catalyst in forming a friendship. As these friendships continue, so do the children and their understanding of the world and each other, and in doing so they begin to form more of a complex personality, one which ultimately lessens the amount of people that they're compatible with. They start to know what they want in a friend, whether that's the kind of interest they share, a certain sense of humour. Their experiences with past friends, no matter their depth, have informed the kind of people that they enjoy spending their time with. Unfortunately, things change and life gets in the way, as children inevitably have to move on to middle school and high school, often bringing these friendships to an abrupt end. Some kids are separated because they end up going to different schools, but even those who attend the same place can experience unexpected changes. It can end up being the case where you end up in different classes, meeting new people, uh, making new friends, and by the end of the year, the only interaction that you have with each other is a cursory nod when you encounter them in the hallway as you walk to your next class. There are also social hierarchies present in many schools, and while one of you may ingratiate into a group like the popular kids, the other may find acceptance and peace with others. It's admittedly quite sad, but it's the way of things. You begin to learn more about who you are and turn to find people who better suit your needs as a person who will be an adult before they know it. After you graduate from high school, you and your friends can end up being scattered across the country, depending on which colleges and universities you get accepted to, and this is the point where all those bonds that you made as a teenager start to fray, and life starts getting in the way of things. Some people stay in touch, but you have new obligations and are surrounded by new people from all walks in life. You learn from them, and in turn learn more about yourself gaining a stronger idea of the kind of people that you want in your life. At this point, the odds of you still being friends with that kid that you met in elementary school or even the ones you met in high school are incredibly slim. You change, life changes, and although change is the enemy of comfort, it can potentially provide greater comforts in exchange. Although higher education is a great opportunity to make some great lifelong friends who have a better understanding of you and the adult that you're going to become, your sense of self can, in some cases, impede your ability to make new friends. As you figure out who you are, the less you fit into certain groups, and that failure to belong can lead some people to try and become a social chameleon, a person who alters their personality in order to fit in, but neglects their actual needs in a friend. No one can blame them, people do what they can to keep from feeling alone, and when you enter the workplace, such tactics can be employed not only to thrive socially, but to succeed. Because you may quickly find out that the real world that you've just been thrust into might not be particularly fond of the person that you've become. So you're an adult now, you have a much better idea of who you are, even though that can be quite confusing at times, and you know what you want in a friend. 
There are parts of your personality that are still developing, and that can keep happening up until your 40s, but the groundwork is set and you are fully aware that there are some people that you just don't gel with. Of course, some people are blessed by being social butterflies. They have the charisma to win over the most cynical of people, but that's relatively rare. We can't all be like me, unfortunately. I'm kidding. Whenever I'm around a group of new people, I end up saying like, three words, and when I get home later on, I end up regretting it. As I mentioned earlier though, the more complex your personality becomes, the less compatible you become with others, and this is why the workplace can be an alienating experience for many. When you're in education, there's no shortage of people around you at any given time. You could go to a class, sit next to a random person each time, and eventually find someone you get along with. In the workplace though, your sample size is far more limited, and thus your chances of finding someone to be a proper friend slim down considerably. These are all other adults of varying age ranges and experiences, and if you work somewhere like an office with a handful of people you have nothing in common with, your work can end up being the place where you go to throughout the week and not really have anyone to talk to, other than maybe sharing some generic small talk to pass the time and have some semblance of connection with another human being. It can be an incredibly disheartening experience, and it's one that I've personally known firsthand. I've worked in places where I got along with everyone and made some good friends, but I've also worked jobs where I felt like I didn't fit in at all, and they were miserable experiences. It can also make you question yourself, too. After all, if you're working 40 plus hours a week, you'd expect to make at least one friend, given all the time that you spend around them, but that moment may never come leading you to think that you're possibly doing something wrong. Having a friend in the workplace can make the world of difference. It can make what would otherwise be an unbearable job slightly more bearable, just knowing that there's someone who shares your woes, and being able to talk with them about interests other than work can be a lifesaver. However, I want to offer a little advice to people. Do yourself a favor, if you do make a friend at work, don't make every conversation about work. Not only is it tiring to hear about all the time, it implies that work is what defines each of you, and it means that your employer gets to dominate even more of your life by making you think about them so much. Talk about literally anything else. You are far more than your work. Don't let it take your time. Like I said a moment ago, some people go as far as altering their personality to fit in among others. To an extent, we do all do this, even if it's just a light amount of code switching. But in the workplace, it can sometimes be a necessity, especially if you're in one of those situations where management expects you to be a team player or says that they want you to treat each other like family. You don't want to feel like the odd one out, so you go along with it, and later that day when you go home, you stare at yourself in the mirror, wondering whether the small amount of dignity that you had left will ever return to you. It won't. We do what we can to fit in. Even those who say that they don't care about fitting in are just lying to themselves to some extent. Even at those workplaces where I didn't fit in, although I accepted that my colleagues and I were incompatible, I still wish that I could find some common ground with them. When you know who you are, changing a little bit for other people isn't so bad, but we all have our limits. The hard part is the rejection. Knowing that people don't get along with you because you are you, and you don't want to change that. It's a great thing to have a strong sense of self, to be proud of who you are, but when you're in the workplace with a handful of people who you feel no kinship with, it can feel like this personality that you've cultivated over the years was in some ways wrong feeling that after spending all that time with people you got along with, you miss the opportunity to get to know and get along with others. Rejection is painful, and the more you find it difficult to make friends, the harder it gets to put yourself out there and get close with others. Some workplaces engender an environment of competition too, where you're convinced not to see your colleagues as potential friends, but as threats who might impede the growth of your career, or even to treat them like stepping stones. It results in a hostile work environment where you can never really trust a colleague, or divulge too much about yourself out of fear that it may be used against you at some point. 
It's hard to know how loyal people are to their employer. One moment you could be talking to a colleague about movies and sending DMs, the next they could be ratting on you to management just because you shared a meme that makes fun of the company. As all these new obligations and complications appear in your life, unsurprisingly you start to lose touch with the friends that you made in high school and college. You told each other that you'll meet up regularly and send messages every day just like it was before, but it becomes clear that it's hard to keep up with. You have a lot going on and you don't have the convenience of being in the same environment all the time. You end up hanging out a couple times, but then that comes to a halt. The daily DMs become once every three months and the next thing you know, the only time you hear from them is when you send emails on birthdays, which let's be honest, you probably would have forgotten if Facebook hadn't reminded you. It's a shame, it truly is, but the forces of life conspire to keep us separated from the ones that we care about. So what can a person do when all their friends have moved on and the workplace doesn't have anyone to help fill the void? Well, I guess there's the outside world and maybe the internet? It's that time in the video where I take you on a short ride on the boost bus. I hate it. A segment where I ask you to indulge me for a moment to promote other great smaller content creators who could use a little help in gaining more of a following. This time I want to ask you to support the work of Cassie Carey, aka The Screen Detective. Cassie is a native of the Bay Area who has been studying film for years now, both at the Academy of Art University and in England at the Screen and Film School. She's now taken her love of film and combined it with her obsession with true crime to analyse media on her YouTube channel, where she explores the real-life stories that inspired some of the most infamous on-screen villains. I'm a sucker for media analysis, in fact it's what I used to do on this channel in its early days, and Hopefully I'd like to return to it some days, but if that's the kind of thing that you're into, then Cassie has you covered. With easy to digest, well-produced and thought-provoking essays. Her videos don't have anywhere near the amount of views that they deserve, so please offer your support by watching, liking, subscribing, anything you can do to help her grow on this awful, awful platform. If you're a small content creator who would like to take a ride on the boost bus, then please send me a single email to solarivideo at gmail.com with the subject boost. Be sure to include a short bio about yourself and your work along with your pronouns and links to socials. Also, please be sure to include links to your work and high quality samples that you'd like to be showcased if you work as something like an artist. I will be able to reply to your emails, but rest assured that I read every single one of them. All right, get off the bus. Go! If you're someone who's under the age of 35, which I know you are because YouTube Analytics tells me, there's a very good chance that you have a friend whom you have met online but never seen in the flesh. It could be someone who lives on the other side of the world or just an hour's drive from where you are. Many of us have that person or persons we've only ever interacted with through a screen. It's becoming increasingly common and it's not really a surprise. The internet has made it incredibly easy to connect with new people with shared interests and beliefs. I myself enjoy playing video games and through it I've made some genuine long-lasting friendships and one of those friendships even resulted in me meeting the person who became my wife, whom I had a long distance relationship with before moving to America to be with her. That incidentally led to me being able to see those friends, but there are others I've known for years but never seen in person. My friend Karashu, who's created numerous amazing graphics for my videos, is one of my closest friends, but we've never actually met in person. A lot of people, especially from older generations, like to downplay the value and importance of online friends and relationships in general, and even though it can be disheartening to feel a strong bond with someone and not be near them, it doesn't diminish that that person means a lot to you. The fact is, if it wasn't for the internet and the many ways that it facilitates communications, including the truly, truly terrible ones, many people would be far more alone than they already are. As easy as it is to maintain contact with friends online, it comes with its own perils. Much like in real life, it can be scary putting yourself out there and interacting with new people. 
The internet is a domain in which we have some more control over how we represent ourselves. It's easier to cultivate a more appealing personality on the internet, or even portray a version of yourself that you wish that you could adopt in your everyday life. As such, much like your actual personality, your online persona is subject to being judged by others, and in turn, potentially being rejected. And having that idealized version of yourself be shot down by others, well, that's a pretty hard blow to the ego. Having said that, please say nice things about me in the comments. From my own standpoint, the internet has not only allowed me to make new friends and find a spouse, but it's made communicating with friends and family in the UK incredibly easy. Just think, it wasn't too long ago that keeping in touch with loved ones overseas meant spending ridiculous amounts of money on international phone calls or sending snail mail. It also keeps me from feeling alone in general. People don't really talk about this, but being a YouTuber full-time can be an incredibly lonely job. I work solo most of the time, and most content creators don't exactly have a tight-knit community where we all talk with each other. Well, they might do, I've just not been invited yet since I basically don't exist on Twitter. Go follow me. I tweet, like, once a month. But at the very least, I have the privilege of doing this job, and I am very, very thankful for it. Yep. Living the dream. It's honestly really difficult to put yourself out there when you're an adult. You know the kind of people that you want to be friends with, but you may not know where to find them. And even if you could, the fear of rejection is powerful enough that it can keep you from even trying to get to know them or allowing them to know you. When you're an adult, having a shared interest simply isn't enough to form a healthy, long-lasting friendship. I mentioned a moment ago how I met some good friends through playing online games, but I've also met some truly, truly awful people. And on a couple of occasions, I've gotten along with someone really well, but then it turned out that they harbored some really reprehensible beliefs. You never know until you start learning more about someone. I know some people say that you should never discuss religion, politics, or any other touchy subjects with friends, but screw that. If I'm spending my time with another person, I have a right to know if they like James Corden, just so I don't waste any more of it. Speaking of which, time plays a role in this too. There's an anxiety that if you should make a new friend, only to find that there are things that you really don't like about them, it can feel like you've wasted your time on another person. Time that could have been spent trying to find someone else, someone more compatible. As adults, we're far more limited in time than we were as children or teenagers. Lots of people work over 40 hours a week. They have partners, families, hobbies, bills, all sorts of obligations, many of which, for better or worse, impede our ability to put ourselves out there. We're all incredibly complex creatures who desire companionship. They're so important that they literally lengthen your lifespan. As you grow older, you get to know more about yourself, but ironically, it becomes harder to know others. And the fear of getting hurt by others, the closer you get to them, is very real. Still, you've just got to put yourself out there a little, even if it's online. Even if you're not the life of the party around new people, chances are they'll still want you around and maybe get to know you. I know I've had my handful of experiences where I joined a group voice chat and barely said a word, but maybe I can work on that. Recently, I've been trying to put myself out there while playing Final Fantasy XIV and speaking more to my free company. They all seem like really nice people, and yeah, it's nice to have new people to talk to. It's also nice to see how well they get along with each other, and this is the thing that they share and love. Here we are, see? Nice little group pose here. Don't we look cool? Well, I look cool. They look okay. Of course, it goes without saying that there are numerous factors which may prevent people from making friends, whether it's because of anxiety, shyness, or many other reasons. But even without the impediments, making real, long-lasting friends in these times can feel borderline impossible. Everything seems to get in the way of getting close to another human being, whether it's work, distance, or even just you being true to yourself. You can try to be what other people want, but personally, I don't think that ever works out well. If you try to be what everyone else wants you to be, you'll find people who like you. But if you be yourself, then you'll find people who love you for who you are. So how do you make friends as an adult? 
Honestly, I don't have any great advice. Ever since moving to another country, I've found it difficult. Not only because of my obligations, but the cultural barriers that are in place. Even though I speak the same language, there's that part of me that will always make me feel like an outsider. And I sometimes worry that people think of me as kind of a novelty rather than a person. I also don't go out too much, and when I do, I often stick to the comfort of being around existing friends. So I'm kind of my own worst enemy in that respect. I guess the best advice that I can offer is to keep trying when you can. There's every chance that you may never find another friendship as valuable as the ones that came before, but even though your time and energy is less than what it was when you were younger, when you were a child, it's worth expending just a little bit just to meet new people. In fact, tell you what, if you want to take a shot right now and find some like-minded people, join my Discord server. There's lots of nice, friendly people there who also enjoy my content, and I'm sure they'll be happy to welcome you. At the end of the day, if all else fails, why not try and get in touch with that old friend you knew but haven't spoken to in a while? Arrange to meet up with them if you can. Well, maybe wait until the pandemic calms down a little bit. It is a mess right now. Have a video call. Go out of your way to talk to someone that you've always cared about, because it's worth it. You might be worried that things have changed too much between you, but honestly, there's a good chance that when you finally talk again, it'll feel just like yesterday. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, then please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. All of that stuff is very, very helpful. I would also like to give a big thank you to all of my patrons who help support these videos. Each month they donate to help keep this channel going and support future projects. And without them, this would be an incredibly difficult endeavor what with YouTube being YouTube. As you can see, they're all scrolling up here right now. They're all wonderful people who I'm so grateful for. And if you want to join them, you can do so at patreon.com slash Solari. Any amount goes a very long way, even if it's a dollar. I would also like to offer a special thank you to all of my patrons that donate $5 or more each month. And that goes out to Seva Olofsson. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Maurice Robert, Candide, Dan McCrary, Remy Allen, Daniel Perone, Anna Marie Hanyasova, Freeman Killer, Lizzie Peasy, Insula Sacra, Paulius Jonases, Grant B, Jay, Jordan Christoph, Matthew Torres, Rach, Enrique Gutierrez, Nathan Frerin, Murgurgur Fashionable, Alina, Rattams, Games, Martina, Sandapanda, Ashton Aplatipus, CB Hart, Kevin Corber, Lillian Roan, Sharfe, Nostracon, Lexi Weiss, Mickey Bonadonna, Sparrow Wagon, Tamara, Sage Mitchell, Marius Stubberud, Your Sweet Pea, Catherine, and Steve Ma. Thank you all so much. I am incredibly grateful for your support. It really does mean the world to me. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Solari TV. And pretty soon I am going to be returning to streaming. And you can find me at twitch.tv slash jsolari. Um, I don't know what I'll be doing exactly, probably just some chatting stuff, maybe play a few games and whatnot, but yeah, my internet is hopefully good now and behaving, so we'll see how that goes. Don't hold me to anything though. Oh yeah, and don't forget as well, you can join us on Discord, the link is in the description beneath. Um, lots of nice people there, I chat there occasionally. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. I hope you can find a friend soon, and I will see you next time, alright? Bye-bye.